Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you about the Power Apps Canvas App's new header control. And this is part of the overall modern controls, which is a huge game changer for the designing of the Canvas App. Now keep in mind, this is part of the preview, which means look, touch, play, just don't go production with it. So here is what the finished product of the header control looks like, and out of the box, it is responsive. So if I were to go and do a preview and show you how it works inside any one of the smartphones, it works. Even in the different smartphone versions, the responsiveness kicks in. And if you switch it over to a tablet, voila, the responsiveness is there. And let's not just stop there. I'll show you how to go and add enhancements such as your own icons, works over in the all of them container, and it works really great. So I'm really excited to walk you through step-by-step step how to use the header control. Stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch to show you how you can go and leverage all of these modern controls which are currently in preview, one of them being the new header one. And a few interesting things have snuck in, so I'll show you those as well. So I'm here in my Power Apps, I'm in a dev type of environment, and now when I go ahead and click on Apps, and if I go to the top, which is Plus U app, these options have arrived, which is pretty neat. So I'm gonna go and select Start with the Page Design, and it's perfect for this scenario for me to go and select the Header Main Section Footer. So I'll go and select that one, now it directly goes and takes me into my Canvas Design, and I really like that we can go and choose the design of the screen right off the bat because if you've noticed if you do this the other way going and selecting a normal app the first screen that shows up is the old design and what i have to do is go and click on the plus new screen and then i've gone to go and select the header footer just makes it a little convinced you know confusing it's best to go through that process over there all right well anyway this is not the whole point now what i got to do is go and start using the modern controls if i go and click on this plus insert I don't see the modern controller there. Why? Because it's currently under preview. So to turn on that preview feature, I need to go and click on settings, I need to click on upcoming features, and instead of you scrolling down to search for it, just make sure that you're on the preview, and on search, search for something called as modern, and voila, modern controls and themes show up. Love this search functionality. So I just go and now toggle it to on, and the moment I do that, if you noticed, on the left side, some neat functions come out. But the theming is there, which we'll use in just a second. But if I now go and click on insert, right over here, you see the modern control. And right over here, voila, is our header control, which is the whole point of this video. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I just click on the tree view because I can actually see which ones I'm gonna go to select. And right over here in the screen container, I am going to go and put on my header container, okay? Because that's the whole one that we want to work on. It's going to be on the header. Um, so there's going to be some interesting things that are going on. So I'm going to start prepping for that. So for example, in this screen one, I'm going to go and now change its name to main screen, all right? And then I can also go ahead and do a duplicate. And in the duplicate, I'm going to go ahead and change this one to edit screen. And you'll see in a minute why I'm doing what I'm doing. Anyway, let's go back to our main screen. In my main screen, specifically on the header container screen, select that, now go to the plus insert, and under modern, go and click on header. Moment you do that, your header control automatically falls into that header container, and it goes ahead and populates the entire thing. Really, really love how the responsiveness immediately kicks in, all right? Um, so that's one of the things. Now when you go ahead and actually do a test, you can see how the responsiveness kicks in. And for that, there's a slight change too. So if you go to the preview the app, and if I go in and now start playing with any one of these things, you get this view over here, which is pretty neat. But if for some reason, when you are testing it on your own physical device, and your responsiveness doesn't kick in, there is one additional setting change that you have to do. You go to settings, in your settings, you go to display, and in your display, you go ahead and change the scale to flit, fit, scale to fit to up. Sometimes, especially if you're using this control for testing sakes in your existing app, this might toggle be on. Uh, you wanna go ahead and turn the toggle switch to off, all right? Little tip that I'm sharing with you. All right, so we're back to the responsiveness. Now, let's spend a little few minutes talking about how this header control works. So if I go and take a look at the header control, if I go and select it on the left side in the tree, you just get one control. Almost has the look and feel of components into it because it's all one neat feature wrapped into it as a control. But it's still got some neat bells and whistles to it. So let's spend a few minutes taking a look at that. On the right side, you are seeing the, under the properties, the first thing called as style. The style, there's three options. There is primary, there is the neutral, as you can see the color changes a little bit, and then there's also the light one. 
Um, I like to stick with the primary because the moment I keep it in the primary, it also goes ahead and adapts to the themes functionality. So for example, the pr primary that we see over here, this out of the box one is actually the Power Apps theme. If I go and change it to steel, that works over there. If I go and change it to red, orange, green, you kind of see where I'm going that these beautiful themes directly apply to these modern controls in general. And that is why it also applies to our new header control. All right, that's neat. Um, on the right side, right over here, you saw that my profile pick came in. And that's something which is out of the box. Um, neat thing about the profile pick is if you go to the advanced settings, on the bottom, you've got these different options that it's pulling from. It's pulling in from the user image, it's putting in the user full name and your user email. The user function is an out of the box functionality already there and the header control definitely goes ahead and leverages it, but pulls all three of those properties. Once again, the image, the full name and the email, which is actually the ones I use heavily. So I'm really glad that they've gone ahead and implemented that. Um, in addition, if you go back to our properties on the left side, you've got this image. Now the image is any of the image that you want to add in addition to the user profile. So for example, in my case, I want to go ahead and put in my company logo. Well, how do I do that? Pretty simple. If you go back on the right side, look below, right over there under logo, it is set to none. But if I click on the drop down, it gives me an option to add an image file. Right over here, I'm going to go and grab one of my images, which is my company logos. And now you see that it populates directly. Really, really love how it's going and filling that up. So once again, if I do a test of responsiveness, I click on the play or the preview and I switch back. It remembered the one which I did before, which was basically for this um, iPhone generation. If I go and switch over to the 11, the responsiveness kicks in 12, 13, 14. It's already there. In fact, if I go and switch over now to an iPad Pro 11, you see the responsiveness is there. It's filling it up really well. And that's what I like about the out of the box functionality. The whole controller of the header, when you put that into the header component, the responsiveness directly kicks in. Really, really love that functionality. Now, I'm sure you've already noticed this, is that when I added the header control out of the box, it went ahead and picked up the name of the screen. So for example, I actually put this header control in my main screen and therefore the name came up, which is the main screen. So how is it doing that? Well, there's two ways to find that out. If I go back into my advanced settings, um, right over here under the title, you see the app.activescreen.name. So that's one way to find that. Again, with the control selected on the top left also, you've got this property section. And on the property section, right if you go on the title, you see the same thing, app active screen dot name. So it's pulling all of this information in over here, which is pretty neat. So for example, now if I go and grab this header, I do a right click, I do a copy, go back into my edit screen. Um, now in my edit screen, I've got the similar type of responsiveness design uh, just under the header. Now if I go and right click and go and do a paste, you see that even though everything came in just the exact way, by exact way means the theme color is there, my logo is there, the icon is here. However, the app active screen in this case is edit screen. So it automatically go ahead and apply that edit screen. Really, really, really neat functionality which is there out of the box. I really love the feature. So that's basically the whole overview of all the features that come in with this header control. But, but, I just don't want to stop over here because let's face it, even though this header control has a good wow factor to it, I need to be able to add enhancements to it. So for example, how do I go even add some of my own controls? For example, let's go back to our main screen. On our main screen, I've got my header control, but on the left, I might want to go ahead and add say a plus icon to it. Well, if I add the plus icon, say if I want to add or edit item, how do I maintain the responsiveness? And, and the same concept, say on the edit screen, on the left, I may want to go ahead and add a home button to take me back to the main screen. And say even in this one, on the right, I want to go ahead and add a save button. Well, how do I go and add all these enhancements, Daniel? And then how do I maintain the responsiveness? Well, let me show you how to do that. So let's start with something easy. Let's go back to our main screen. And in our main screen, in our header control, I'm going to click on the header. And over here, I am going to go and now add my plus icon, right? Uh, so I'm going to come up to the top, which is a plus insert. And I will go and click on my uh, classic. And on the icons, I'll just go and click on plus, all right? So now, moment I do that, it has gone ahead and stuck to the right. Why? Because we are in a header container and container does do that. So let's first be good stewards by going and giving it some name, some name that made sense to us. So this is main screen. So I'm going to put the acronym MS uh, and I'm going to go and say add icon. That way I know what it is. In addition, I want to go ahead and now change this in the reorder, moving it all the way to the start. 
So neat, I go ahead and now see my functionality, all right? And then just to be a little bit careful, click on the properties under align in container property, I select the option to go ahead and stretch it out. So it nicely fills in. All right, so we've got the information. Now problem over here is that it is not filling up and giving me the theme, which is the coloring. Now, how do I solve that problem? Well, that's a good question and a very real life situation. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is this one's fill, this actually icons fill. I'm gonna go and select that and actually change that over to no color altogether. And it'll make sense just why. Next thing I wanna do is don't just select any of the icons, but select the entire header container. The header container is whose color we are going to change and, and we are going to go ahead and match it to the theme. And to do that in the header container in its property, we're gonna select the fill and I'm gonna change the fill, take remove this altogether. You can remove it or you can comment it out, whatever you want. I'm gonna go and say app.theme. I'm gonna select the theme. IntelliSense is giving me some options. I'm gonna go and say colors. And in the color, you get all of these things. Just go and search for primary. And now it's automatically gone and populated that. So the last thing that I gotta do is go in and take this icon and this icon, which is by default, its color is set to the color you see, go ahead and change that over to the white one. And voila, it is now using the theme color. And just to prove that to you, if I go and click on play, um, you see that it's responsiveness, that's one thing. But if I go now to my themes and start playing around with the themes, all the colors, just focus on this part. Remember guys, this is the one where we added the icon. All of these are triggering in and leveraging the theme that we added. So this is the power of themes and this is the way you wanna actually do the designing. Even when you added a new control inside the header container, which is right next to the header control, theming is consistent across all of them, all right? Very important tip that you wanna work on. But here's a little situation that has happened if you haven't already noticed. When I click on play, you notice that I actually had my profile image. So where did that disappear, Daniel? Well, one of the things was because if I go back out over here, uh, let's go back to our tree and on the tree, if I click on the header, you see these two lines, I'll go and actually reduce the size. You see that the header control actually got moved or shifted a little bit to the right. We need to go and now maintain the responsiveness of this. So how do I go and do that? The header control, if you go and take a look at its width, this is what the width is, which is parent dot width, which is basically what we need. In addition to that, I'm gonna go and say minus and whatever is the add icon that we added. So right dot add icon and its width. If I go and do that now, voila, we actually now see our icon. But, but the true test is, is this responsive? So let me go and do a preview. It shows up, voila, it is responsive because you can see it directly in the tablet side. Go and switch on in one of the phones and the responsiveness is working. So it's important that you basically go ahead and use this functionality, which is the parent width minus whatever was the icons width. I'm avoiding to put in hard coded numbers, like actual numbers, like 300 or 70 or whatever. Don't put numbers, but go ahead and get the width or go ahead and use the existing property value that's what makes it responsible, right? So start kind of getting familiar with all of this. In fact, let's go ahead and do this in our edit screen as well. In my edit screen, if I go and grab the header one, let's make this a little bit smaller so you can actually see it. Um, same thing I wanna do in my header one as well. I'm gonna click on the insert. In this case, I'm gonna go and actually add a plus. I always randomly do that, but you and I know it's not the plus that I want, it's actually the home, all right? So I go and click on the home, search for it, neat. Uh, this home icon, we're gonna rename it now. So this is going to be ES for edit screen. And I'm gonna go and put in a home icon. And I'm gonna go and now move this all the way to the start. So you see this. And you already saw me do a few things over there. So let's repeat that just to refresh you all in my mind. Uh, in the align and container, I'm gonna, gonna stretch this out. Again, very neat. Um, the actual fill color of that, I'm gonna take that away. And I'm gonna go and put it as to the transparent one. All right, pretty neat. Now in the actual header container for its fill, we are going to go in and say, we are going to go in and replace it with app.theme. In the theme, we are going to go and use colors and the colors once again is primary. Nicely, we got all this information. And then finally, back to the icon, change that one from this color over to white and voila, the information is here. So we got that piece done. And as you can also remember, the icon disappeared over here. So let me go back to our header. In the header, we actually go and change its entire width. You know what the formula was, minus that with the ES home icon, subtract that by the width, and this thing shows up. 
Now, final thing over here is we got to go ahead and add the other container section over here, which is say, I want to go ahead and add the plus icon. Well, how do I go and fix that? Same concept, click on the insert. And in this case, I'm going to go and add the add. The add icon is dissipated a little bit to the right. So I'll go and change that. I'll go ahead and say again, this is the ES add icon. And now we've got to do one more thing. Go back again to the width of the header. And over there, we are going to use the existing formula, but subtract one more value. And you want to guess what that value is? You got it. That was actually for the new add icon that we added. So don't click on the icon. icon. So don't click on the add icon, stay on the header one in its width property, but over here, subtract by the ES add icon and get its width. And moment I go and select that, you will see that the I add, add icon showed up over here. And same thing we got to do, go ahead and now expand this one off. So we get that information and then go ahead on the add icon, uh, change its color directly, change its background color to the temp, the fill color, go ahead and change that one to the uh, white and this thing has shown up. So now you see how we are able to maintain the responsiveness of the new header control, but also add some enhancements by going ahead and making sure that we add dynamic formulas using the width values of the new controls. And once again, as a final proof, if I go and click on preview, there you go. This is the tablet view, the edit screen shows up and now everything just fits in. I love the header control using the responsiveness. So this header control and overall modern controls is going to revolutionize the look and feel of the Power Apps Canvas apps. Because let's face it, and even I'm a victim of that, we can actually build really good Canvas apps, but sometimes they look a little ugly. While the modern apps, these modern controls are truly going to make them look so beautiful. Now keep in mind, all of them are currently in preview, but I highly, highly urge you to start playing with it. In fact, take some of your existing apps, definitely make a copy of it first, and start testing it and tweaking it so you get yourself familiar with it because once thing becomes generally available or goes GA, you can quickly start adopting it. Hopefully this video was useful to you and as always, keep using Power Apps. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.